Welcome to another edition of Holy Ground, hosted by Greg Monroe Vlog. This is not going to be quite so evangelical as it is just sharing what I have on my mind, on my mind as far as uh, perception and understanding. When the atheist community, and I'm not singling out a particular athe atheist, I'm just saying that the community in general that I see here on YouTube are trying very hard. They're, they're laboring extremely hard to to educate me and convince me that there is no God. And if they can't educate me or convince me otherwise, they seem to want to peer pressure me into joining with them because otherwise I find myself just hated and despised because of my belief system. But other than peer pressure, which to me is a, uh, you know, I mean, you, you just don't do it that way. At least you don't do it with me because I would, uh, I would most likely be rebelling against peer pressure anyway. I did it in school. I'll, I'd do it here regardless of what the subject matter was that the, majority was attempting to put forward as being the correct mindset. But, back to the, the evidences. Now, two things that I want to cover real quick, and I don't want this to be a long video, so I'm going to try to keep it simple, try to keep it to the the basics and I know when you when you simplify you can very easily oversimplify and miss the point entirely but this is something from my understanding and might help with future communication if you understand where I'm coming from first off handling of evidence to me an atheist is not an expert in spiritual matters. They, they clearly can't be because how they handle the evidence that they do have. If, for example, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. Here they have a manuscript which is thousands of years old. And as much as they would hate to have to admit it, there is a lot of truth to be found there. Obvious, apparent truth. And one thing that is true and has been holding out as truthful from my viewpoint is that those that will support my position will be despised by the majority of the world out there because... They don't want to hear it. It's written in black and white. The book explains it. So, that is clearly, you're, you're, you're proving the book to be true when you treat me and treat the book in that fashion. Second, there is nothing new under the sun. As e Even Steve Jobs, before he passed... As much as that man saw as far as technological change in the world, one of the last public statements he made was that nothing has changed. And he's right. Nothing has changed. Man is still the way man is 
after 6,000 years. There ain't nothing new. So, what was written in wisdom and what is called common sense 6,000 years ago still applies today. But when you say it doesn't apply, and when you mishandle the evidence, and you come and and you come up with the evidence and you and you sort through it and you pick and choose what you wanna what you want to use. And when you take it out of context and you twist it, if you're doing that with a book that I fully understand, then what makes you think that you can come up with all of this fossil evidence, climatology, physics, astronomy, and all this other evidence that you're gathering together to prove that God does not exist, what makes you think you're not using that same evidence in the same way? Twisting it, contorting it, cherry-picking what you want out of it to be able to prove your point. It's I can't remember exactly what fallacy is, but but it is a it, what you're talking about here is a particular fallacy. It's a personal bias. You are putting your own personal bias on the evidence. And if you're going to misuse the evidence like that, on evidence that is in my realm of understanding, then what makes me think you're going to treat any other evidence in the areas that I don't understand any different? Second point is your search for God, to me, and this is the simplest way I can explain it, is you are using forensic science to fully examine the inside of a Petri dish. You're taking a Petri dish that has a living culture in it, a bacterial culture with the meat, with the growth media, and, and everything, the proteins that are involved, a full active cultural media in a Petri dish. And you're examining that Petri dish for evidence of the scientist. And you're coming up empty. And you're saying, I cannot prove that a scientist exists inside this Petri dish. And because you can't find evidence of a scientist in the Petri dish, you're claiming that there was no scientist. And because there was no scientist, you also come to a conclusion that that Petri dish with its growth culture and bacteria inside of it all just spontaneously appeared one day. Just out of nothing. Out of nowhere, poof, suddenly you've got a Petri dish with culture growing in it, and that's your, ex that's your ev evidence and explanation. Because you can't find evidence of a scientist. I know it's, a sim it, it's simple, but until you, can, until you get yourself in a position where you can look outside of the Petri dish, or you're willing to accept the bits of information, the bits of contamination, I guess you could say, that the scientist left behind when he put the Petri dish together, and purposely left certain marks, certain amount of trace materials, which you reject out of hand. Which how can how can you prove you know it, how can you prove there's no God when God has left materials here to, to show of his existence and then you and then you reject it or then you mishandle it and mislabel what God is as long as you as long as you're treating what I know with such contempt then it gives me no faith that you'll treat anybody else's evidence or you'll treat any other evidence. You get a collection of bones together 
and and like some kind of wizard, toss the bones down on a table and and make some kind of a conjured up prediction to explain the bones, to read the bones. To me, that's that's just voodoo, and that's what I see you doing is voodoo science, and and then you want to use peer pressure to convince me that your voodoo science is right and what I know to be true is not. You're, you're not going to reach me that way. You're really not. Start by honestly discussing the scriptures. What they teach, what they say, in context. What it is all about. And to do that isn't going to take forensic science. It's going to take philosophy. Because it's a way of life. It's a way of viewing the world around you. It is to tell you what is right and wrong to do. Not what, it, not what can be done, but what should be done. What is proper? That we can discuss. This is Greg Monroe. Much longer video than I intended, but thank you for listening to me rant.